Saludos, greetings. I am Carlos Flores, Associate Director for Hispanic Ministry, which is a part of the Multicultural Office of the Diocese of St. Petersburg. Today, I am honored to present Father Carlos Rojas. Father Carlos was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and raised in the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. At age 15, he moved with his family to Tampa. Father Carlos graduated from St. John Vianney Seminary in Miami, where he received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Philosophy. He then went to St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary in Boynton Beach, where he received a Master of Divinity and a Master of Arts in Theology. Father Carlos was ordained to the priesthood by Bishop Robert Lynch for the Diocese of St. Petersburg on May 20, 2006. He is a certified spiritual director and retreat director from the Institute of Priestly Formation from Creighton University. He completed a pontifical certificate in Marian Studies from the International Marian Research Institute from the University of Dayton, Ohio. He considers himself a Marian diocesan priest with the mission of raising children into Christ Jesus in partnership with Mary in the spirit of St. Joseph, chaste spouse of Mary. Father Carlos is currently parochial vicar of St. Cecilia Parish in Clearwater and is the spiritual director of Schoenstatt Tampa Bay, Inc. It is my pleasure now to present Father Carlos Rojas. Congratulations on having made your consecration to the Blessed Mother or having renewed your consecration. Now, the big question is, what do you do after the consecration? In this conference, we would like to give you some pointers of what things you could do to continue growing in your relationship with the Blessed Mother. Now, I could summarize it in three things. We highly encourage you as to cultivate your relationship and your consecration to do three things. One, pray. Two, we encourage you to study. And three, we encourage you to be part of a small community, a Marian small community, in which you can be uh, supported, you can be held accountable, and you can be empowered to serve and to serve, as our Blessed Mother will love to have you do so. Now, in regards to prayer, here I would like to remember a beautiful dream from Don Bosco, uh, the founder of the Salesians. He had a dream that the church was being attacked. It was in the middle of a big storm. But then the mother church, the ship, was able to anchor between two poles, Mary and the Eucharist. So in regards to prayer, we highly encourage you to found yourself, to ground yourself in the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. It is part of our tradition. It is, it is the heart of being Catholic. And if you would like to develop a relationship with the Blessed Mother, you have to go to Mass. And we are in the middle of an initiative to welcome Catholics, to welcome them back home after the coronavirus. So we highly encourage you to come back to your parish, your local community, and to participate live, not just live stream, but to go to Mass and above all to receive the Holy Eucharist. Now, Prayer, the perfect prayer, is the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. But other forms of prayer that will cultivate your Mary and relationship, of course, is the Rosary. There is beautiful prayer, and uh, I really can't top any, uh, I can't suggest any better Marian prayer than praying the Holy Rosary. Now, if you could combine the two of them, like the dream of Don Bosco, who anchor the, the church in the Eucharist and Mary, if you'd put them together, a beautiful way of celebrating uh, and, and deepening in the mystery of the Holy Eucharist is through Eucharistic adoration, and at the moment of the Eucharistic adoration, to pray the Holy Rosary. Now, in regards to prayer and 
study and being part of a small community, there is an organization, there's a, a, a Catholic media apostolate based in our own diocese that publishes uh, books and does weekly blogs that I will highly recommend. They're really strong in, in bringing Mary and the Eucharist. There's two books that they've published that we highly recommend is The Rosary, Eucharistic Meditations with St. Peter Julian e. Amard, Apostle of the Eucharist. So this will be a good meditation to have as you're praying your rosary and having in front of you the, uh, an adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Now, another book that they have published is this one, Consecration uh, to Jesus through Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament, 33 Days with St. Peter Julian Amard, Apostle of the Eucharist. Uh, like I mentioned, this um, Elisheba House is a, a Catholic media apostolate. The Elisheba House uh, produces books, weekly blogs. Their main mission is to lead people to the love of God present in the Holy Eucharist through the writings of St. Peter Julian Amard and through devotion to Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. Now, other ways in which you could pray and study and be part of a small community is by searching for third orders. There are many religious communities within our Catholic Church, and each one of them will have a third order or some form of lay associates. Uh, I will highly encourage uh, those who are affiliated and have a great devotion to the Blessed Mother. Uh, like for example, the, the lay Carmelites. Uh, this, this is a, a Catholic lay members of the Carmelite orders, which serve Jesus Christ and His Gospel under the patronage of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Uh, so the beauty of the Lake Carmelites, it's if in the uniqueness of what they promote is the contemplative prayer. Uh, the Carmelites are known to promote the contemplative way of prayer. So if you're inclined towards contemplative prayer, then I will highly encourage you to seek out the Lake Carmelites. There's actually four small groups uh, uh, in our diocese um, and for more information, you could reach uh, our, the regional formator, director of the Lake Carmelites, Pat Mermelstein, and she could give you more information about that. Now, uh, other ways of praying, studying, and being part of a small community, uh, the Magnificat Home. Uh, the Magnificat uh, is, a, is a group. Uh, there's actually a group that uh, grew out of the Charismatic Renewal Movement, uh, and it, it came from the Archdiocese of New Orleans, um, and it's now in an, an international ministry spread throughout the world. Um, now, this is a, a private association of the Christian faithful, um, and their ministry is specifically focused to women. Uh, to grow in holiness through the opening more fully of the powers and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So their focus is uh, focusing on women. They have prayer breakfast known as uh, the Magnifica prayer breakfast. They have an annual retreat in March and now they started a monthly rosary uh, in the midst of adoration. For more information you could uh, reach the Tampa Magnificat Dot org. Uh, another group, uh, once again, we encourage you to pray, study, and be part of a small group. Um, another one who also came out of the charismatic movement, and this one is homegrown, um, it's one of the hidden treasures of our diocese, is the Marian Servants of the Divine Providence. Now they're also very charismatic. They're strong in their healing mass. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m. they have a healing mass at the House of Prayer. Um, and really they're encouraging openness uh, to the reception and the expressions of the Holy Spirit, but typical of a group that comes out of, out of the charismatic renewals. Now, they have a rule of life because they're a public association. The Magnifica, that was a private association. The Marian Service of Divine Providence, they're a 
public association. Uh, Magnifica focuses on, on women. Uh, Marian servants of divine providence are open to both male and females. Now, they're strong in their retreat ministry. If you're looking to have an Ignatian retreat, a private retreat, or be part of a retreat, uh, they're constantly giving retreats. Uh, they also have a wonderful school of formation for spiritual directors. I highly encourage it. Uh, they're really good and people come from all around the nation to be part of the program that is given here in our own diocese. Now they're associated with the uh, Franciscan University in Studentville, also with EWTN and with the Institute of Priestly Formation. They're also really strong in serving and, and helping our priests grow in holiness. I myself am a beneficiary of the Marian Service of Divine Providence. My spiritual director is, is a Marian servant of the Divine Providence. So uh, thank you, Adrian, for the wonderful work that you do in helping me grow in holiness. So that will be the Marian Servants of Divine Providence. Now, there, there are other associations. Once again, we're promoting you to pray, to study, and to be part of a small group. Uh, another one that, um, that is here um, locally is the International Consecrated Marian Society. They have been instrumental in developing this uh, Diocesan Marian Congress, so we are indebted to their contribution and to their support of uh, building and structuring this Marian Diocesan Congress. The International Consecrated Marian Society. Their main thing is to promote consecration to Jesus through Mother Mary. Uh, they want to teach the importance of Mary and of praying the rosary as part of the mission of evangelization. Uh, and the uniqueness of this international consecrated Marian society, it has a, a flavor from the African culture. Uh, the founder and the coordinator, Selena Opi Opaliki, uh, who is a graduate of the Lay Pastoral Ministry Institute of our diocese. Uh, the spiritual director is Bishop William Avenier from the Diocese of Giboko in Nigeria. Um, and there, we are very uh, grateful. For more information about the International Consecrating uh, Marian Society, you could uh, reach them through MarianSociety.org. MarianSociety.org. Now, what are we promoting? For you to pray, for you to study, and to be part of a Marian small group of faith. Now, the next two that I'm going to teach about, they've been around a little bit older. They have uh, more history, and, and they're uh, well known within the Catholic Church, not just in our diocese, but internationally. Uh, the, one, the first one I would like to speak is the Legion of Mary. Uh, so I want to congratulate those who are of the Legion of Mary, Legionnaires, because this year, 2021, you are celebrating your 100th anniversary. So congratulations to you. Uh, this started uh, with their first meeting it was in Dublin, Ireland. So this gets the little Irish flavor. Uh, they started in September the 7th of 1921. Their founder is Servant of God, Frank Duff. Uh, he died in the 1980s. And this is a, a lay apostolic association. A lay apostolic association. Their mission is under the leadership of of Mary Immaculate, the Mediatrix of all graces, they desire to serve the church and neighbor. So the uniqueness of the Legion of Mary is twofold. Uh, one is their militant, and two, their oriented towards service. By militant, I mean their structure in a way that follows almost like if it was a great army. Mary being that great general, the leader that is leading the servants, the legionnaires to serve. Um, and the way their structure is, they have, let me see if I say this correct, presidiums, presidiums at the local parish community. Then they have the local council, then the regional council, then the national council. Uh, and once again, the main focus is service. Mary is the general. She's sending the servants in a military way to serve. And I've been part of some of the meetings in the parishes that I've been part of. Uh, they're a wonderful community. You could be an active legionnaire or you could be an auxiliary legionnaire. The auxiliary support 
with their prayers, and then the active legionnaires are going out there to serve, to visit the sick, to promote the rosary, to make visitations. Once again, cooperation and collaboration with Mary as the general. Uh, so if you like the militant-like structure, and you like to be out there in service with our Blessed Mother, then the Legion of Mary is the group for you. Uh, another group that's been around even longer than the Legionnaires of Mary is the Schoenstatt Movement. They started in Germany in 1914. Uh, the founder is the servant of God, Joseph Kentenich, Father Joseph Kentenich, and they're really strong in uh, taking the understanding of a consecration to the Blessed Mother, and they've developed the Mariology, the understanding of a consecration to the next level. And they speak of it as a covenant of love. Now, consecration, the classic way to do a consecration, is through the writings and the spirituality of St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, the founder of the Schoenstatt movement had a consecration, and, and he was a spiritual director to seminarians. And he had a little group of seminarians who've done the consecration to St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, and as they were growing as a sodality or fraternity of seminarians, Marian seminarians consecrated to the Blessed Mother, they began to develop the Mariology of a covenant of love. See, when you speak of a consecration in the spirituality of St. Louis de Montfort, we speak of um, what they call a spirituality of slavehood. She is the queen, I am her servant, I am in service, I'm a slave of the Blessed Mother to lead people uh, to Jesus uh, through Mary. Now, what Schoenstedt did, they take that understanding and go even further. Instead of a spiritual slavehood, they promote a loving relationship, a collaboration, a partnership, a covenant, and a covenant of love. So instead of Mary being the queen and we are the slave and the servants, they t go even further and say, no, Mary is our partner and we work with her. We develop this partnership and this covenant of love. Now. When Schoenstatt promotes the covenant of love, uh, and here begins the uniqueness. I, I like Schoenstatt because it really gives practical ways to live a Marian consecration. You've done the Marian consecration, so you're probably wondering, well, how do I live this out? Well, some of the suggestions the Schoenstatt movement will give is, do your consecration, a renewal of your consecration daily. Now, the Schoenstatt movement promotes a very famous short prayer of consecration that has been around even before Schoenstedt. And it goes like this, My Queen, my Mother, I give myself entirely to you and to show my devotion to you. I consecrate to you this day my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, my entire self without reserve. As I am your own, my good mother, guard me and defend me as your property and possession. Amen. So one thing that we suggest in regards to prayer, do the Marian consecration, the short Marian consecration, and do it daily to help you focus throughout your day. Now, let me go back to Schoenstatt, because this is re really what they did. Once they established the covenant of love, they went even further. They say, Mary, we want you to come to this shrine. Now, mindful, uh, these young seminarians together with uh, servant of God, Father Joseph Kentenich, uh, had a little shrine that was like their clubhouse. And that's where they had their regular meetings as a little sodality, a Marian sodality of consecrated to the Blessed Mother. Now, in the little shrine, little house, which you could only feed maybe 20, 25 people at most. It's just a small shrine. They dare to ask the Blessed Mother, say, Mary, we want you to take possession of this shrine. Literally, what they were asking is, Mary, we want to feel your presence. We want to experience what happens when we go to Mary in apparitions and we go to Lourdes or Fatima and, and you get this presence of our Blessed Mother. We want you to manifest that maternal loving presence in this shrine. And in order for that to happen, we're willing to collaborate by contributing to 
your hands to the shrine all the merits of the good work we've done. If you remember uh, your consecration to our Blessed Mother, if you follow the 33 days uh, to morning glory or just the, the classical devotion of Mary and devotion uh, by St. Louis the Montfort, true devotion to Mary, uh, they're very strong about giving everything to Mary. If you consecrate yourself to Mary, you're giving everything to her. The, the good works and the bad, the merits of our good work, your our, our efforts, your sacrifices, everything you do, your own life, everything, the things you've done in the past, in the future, in, in the present moment, everything is given to men, to Mary. So what Schoenstatt suggests is each day you write down in a piece of paper, what is it that you're offering the Blessed Mother now? But now with that capital of graces, they give it to Mary, asking Mary to take possession of the shrine so that Mary can take of the capital of graces, the things that we offer to her, and from there distribute it. So now you see this beautiful partnership, this covenant of love, where you ask the Blessed Mother to take possession, you collaborate with her as you contribute by literally writing in a piece of paper and laying it at her hands so that Mary can take the fruits of those graces and then bestow it to other people. Now, the original shrine has now duplicated throughout the whole world. Now, more than 300 shrines uh, following the same model of the original shrine in Germany. Not only the shrine, daughter shrines, but also home shrines. That's something we're promoting really big, especially as, as we experience the coronavirus and, and the painful experience of having the, the, our churches closed, uh, and that was very painful. But one of the fruits out of that is our renewed understanding that the family is the domestic church. You at home are a church. So just as we go to church to be part of a parish community, you actually should think of your house, your home, as also the place of the domestic church. Now, church that will be big in promoting home shrines following the same spirituality of the original shrine in Schoenstatt in Germany, we promote that you also have a home shrine that really incarnates the theology and the understanding that your house, your home, is the domestic church. So following the same spirituality of Schoenstatt and a way to daily live out your Marian consecration would be to ask the Blessed Mother to take possession of your home shrine, to take possession of your home, and from there to bestow her graces to the members of the home and, and those who come to visit. But not just asking her, but remember this is a covenant, a partnership, then how are you contributing? What do you give Mary that Mary can take from that and distribute at home to the family members and those who visit. So here is the spirituality of living out your consecration by having a little home shrine, asking the Blessed Mother to take possession of that home shrine. And every day at the beginning or at the end of the day, you write down what happened. In my practice, what I do is in the morning, I go to my home shrine, I do my little prayer, my short consecration prayer, my queen, my mother, I give myself entirely to you. I finish that prayer and I go on my day with the desire to really live out the virtues of Mary and to live out my consecration to the Blessed Mother in the daily activities, the things that I'm involved in my life. At the end of the day, I take a piece of paper and I write down everything that I'm going to surrender and give to our Blessed Mother. The good things that I did, not the, the, the bad things that I need to grow in, uh, the merits of my acts, the difficulties that I had, oh I was about to scream to so and so, but I, I, I pray for patience, I kept my composure, I'm going to offer you that beautiful sacrifice, oh I felt like pulling the hairs of my son, and uh, but I, I was loving and charitable. You write all that down and then you put it in your home shrine. Our Blessed 
Blessed Mother, take those things that you give her. She makes it beautiful because she's the Queen of Heaven. She wraps it up in beautiful bows. And then from those same graces that you give her, now she bestows on family members and on those that visit the home shrine. Now, the Schoenstatt movement is in the midst of uh, developing and building a, a, a Schoenstatt shrine in our diocese. That is a journey, so if you're interested, we invite you to, uh, to just look at our, Schoen our page, Schoenstatt uh, Tampa Bay Inc., uh, and to show uh, your desire to learn more about Schoenstatt. So, uh, in short, uh, having spoken of the different uh, ways that you can grow in spirituality and your consecration, we are encouraging you to pray. So prayer will be renew uh, a consecration prayer every day. Pray, pray the rosary. Pray, pray, pray. Especially pray within the context of the Holy Eucharist, Eucharistic adoration, the celebration of the Mass. We pray. Uh, we try to grow to be like Mary at the foot of the cross. And Jesus Christ is the ultimate uh, gift. He is the sacrifice, the one who gave himself for us. We want to be like Mary at the foot of the cross. And we do so by celebrating and being part of the Holy Eucharist. So we pray. We pray the rosary. We renew our consecration. We study. We look for ways to read uh, about devotion to our Blessed Mother. There's plenty of uh, documents from our Mother Church in regards to the Blessed Mother. You could deepen in the Marian dogmas. You could be part of a Bible study that deepens in the relationship of Mary and Christ and how Mary is present in Scripture. You study, you study. The idea is not just to study to grow in your head, but to grow in your heart and to grow in relationship, to cultivate that relationship as you get to know more and more our Blessed Mother. So we pray, we study, and we associate ourselves with a small community of faith, of Marian, so that uh, Marian faithful, so that you can grow. You could be held accountable to your desire to live out your promises of a consecration. Uh, you could be empowered to serve and to live out the virtues of Mary and to really be what we are, a church. Uh, we are a family. So it's important that we belong to the family. Let it be as a home domestic church home shrine, let it be in our local parish, let it be in our diocese. Now, here I want to make an apology. I'm sure there's other Marian movements uh, that are working within our diocese. I've only promoted uh, those who have been cleared by our diocese. Uh, now, if you belong to a Marian movement uh, within our diocese and would like to be cleared, uh, just reach the uh, multicultural office of our pastoral center so that we could begin the process of, of recognizing you and promoting you in future Marian Congress. Now, uh, a big dream that we will have as, as uh, the Diocesan Marian Congress and the Executive Board that has organized this Congress for you, we would like to have as many members of the different Marian movements to collaborate in making this Marian Congress even better. Uh, so if we join forces, all of those who are consecrated to our Blessed Mother, regardless of what is your preference, what is your charism, what is your spirituality, what movement you belong to, if we could just join forces and be become one great family of children of Mary working to promote uh, consecrations and devotion to our Blessed Mother because if we grow in relationship with our Mother, you are most definitely going to grow in relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I thank you for your time and I hope to see you around and keep in touch. Now here's more information of how you can learn about all these different movements that I've spoken about and how to get more information about being cleared uh, within our diocese so that we could promote you in the next Marian Congress. God bless you and I hope to see you soon.